growing up in Chicago, gang central right there. And every day you hear ambulances throughout the day and cops and you hear shootings, even when you're a little kid. Whether you liked it or not, you had to grow up a lot faster in a bad way. You know where you're at and you know what's around. So even though you know you're not a part of anything, you still know you have to keep an eye out. My dad was a photographer. Mom worked. I grew up Catholic. It was a lot of rules and do's and don'ts, and you didn't have a choice. Then there was a point where dad started drinking. He would uh, tell me to uh, go to the closet, and he'd tell me, go pick the one that you want me to whip you with. My thinking was, you know, you can beat me until you kill me, Dad. But guess what? I'm still going to love you, and I'm still going to be your son no matter what, dead or alive. Because all I really wanted was to spend time with him. But we never had one good conversation like a father-son, you know, nothing like that. I wanted to feel belonging to somebody that I know was going to love me and that they knew that I love them. When I joined the gang, it was like joining a family. At age 13, the streets was my life. I shot at people, sold drugs, stole, broke into cars in broad daylight, got into a lot of fights, beat up a lot of guys and got myself beat up too a lot of times as life goes they caught up with me when i made the call to my mom she had told me that uh my dad he had cancer i never told him I love him. I had that thing in my head where I'd, he's still gonna make it enough to where I get out, because I only had two more months left. I get to my bunk and, uh, you know, I'm praying, asking with everything I have, let me see him so I can tell him, you know, that I still loved him and, uh, you know, I never held anything against him. The next day, the guard walks up. He's like, yeah, you need to call home. I get the phone and um, my mom answers and, you know, she's, bawling and she's like oh you know your dad you know he's he's gone you know I started to cry too and I was like oh and I'm telling myself be strong for your mom because now you're the man that's it at that moment God failed me he let me down and that was it you know I was done no church no more God no more Bible Nothing religious, even remotely, and the story. I'm at the South Bend Reentry Center, and I'm laying down, and I get a tap. And it's one of the guys, he wakes me up and I lift the sheet, uncover my head and I look at him and I'm like, what? You know, he's like, well, come on, let's, let's go to church. <laughs> I looked at him and I actually laughed. I was like, yeah, sure. And I was like, no, it's not gonna happen, man. And I just rolled over, covered my head and uh, I don't know, something knocking me in the head and I just jumped out and I said, fine, let's go. When we get here, we drive up and I'm looking and I'm like, where's the church, you know? Cause I'm used to, you know, the big old cross in the building and everything. I don't expect people to come up to me or say hi or anything else, but it, it really surprised me, you know, cause there was people saying hi. A couple people introduced themselves and shook my hand and it just felt good. That point on, it was kind of like when you slowly open your eyes, it's a bright sunny day, you know, it was like, 
kind of opening up again. From that point on, you know, I started coming. God in his own way, kind of like a father to the kid. You want him to learn the lesson, but at the same time, it's like you don't want to lose him completely, so you kind of give the little nudge, come on, this is the way to go. We went to the library at the center and looked for a nice King James Version and just actually started reading it and everything. And one of the guys in the room was like, what? <laughs> He's like, you swore you weren't gonna do that. I was like, yeah, well, you know, miracles happen, so. Before it was like always foggy, kind of like that little whirlpool of black water just, you know, and I was right in the middle. Whereas now it's like I'm out on the side, you know, I'm just constantly smiling is no matter what at work, at the center, and I have guys couple guys that come and they're like, you seem like you're at peace with yourself or happy. You know, it's made me a, a new man, a new person. Once I opened up myself, my mind, my heart, God, you know, that's it, cleaned everything out. You know, God's not gonna want me or, or whatever. You know, it, it all went away. You know, like clean slate, clean plate, nice, clean, shiny, polished, and there, there you go.